Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with Sheffield United. In today's episode, we have the final of the Europa League against Lazio. And of course, that means the end of season. I'll chatter about the squad, what we expect for next season and things like that. We'll quickly run through a couple of dreadful fixtures since the last time we met. The first of which was a 3-0 away defeat against Wolves. We never really competed in this game, as you can see by the chances created. They were far more effective in possession than we were, and they fully deserved the three points. And then again, while well, we probably deserved a little bit better, again, still not really creating anything, but we did dominate match stats. Manchester United beat us 1-0 at home. Bruno Fernandes getting the goal in the 70th minute. That gave them the win. And this is how the Premier League table looks after those fixtures. We remain in sixth, which uh, matches last season's performance. And um, I'm a little bit disappointed, I'll not lie. Not in terms of the position, but particularly in terms of the points. I thought we might have been able to surpass last season. We did by only three points. And I think, especially our first 11, it is a hell of a lot better than it was last season. I think the strength and depth is where we are really struggling. You know, beyond our first 11, you've got pretty average championship players at best. Um, so that will be an area we'll look to identify and improve during the summer. But three points gained, sixth place again, Europa League football guaranteed for next season. It's not so bad. But of course, today is all about the Europa League final, where we may be able to get Champions League football for next season, which will be just absolutely beautiful. Not finishing the top four, but winning the Europa League is ideal for us. Lazio are the competition for today's game. They're currently sitting fourth in Serie A, so they're having a fantastic season themselves. They're already qualifying for the Champions League. They've still got some very, very good players as well. As you could see there, Chiro Mobley was one of the top scorers in Serie A. He is like an absolutely fantastic striker. And the fact that he's still got those sort of physicals at 32 is definitely going to be a problem for us going into this game. Kingsley Coleman, they've got on loan, I'm assuming, from Bayern Munich. A £54 million winger. Of course, he's going to be good. He's got the pace to really cause problems down the wings. Joaquin Correa is an interesting signing. I believe he's a... Where is he at? He is at Lazio in real life. Um, I re recognise him from his Sampdoria days. Um, a really good attacking midfielder. Not like great, not like unbelievable, not like top level quality, but he is a fantastic player. So let's see who's performing best for them in the league. Uh, Manuel Lazari, their right back, really, really competent. £37.5 million worth Italian right back um, or right midfielder. Uh, Francesco Asabi, a really, really good centre half. Hasn't got the pace anymore, but he's still perfect pretty much everywhere else. So just to give you the sort of idea of the level of competition we're facing with Lazio, it isn't. A cut and run thing we probably uh, I'm hesitant to say we'll have a weaker squad we might be a pretty similar level as to what Lazio are but again we are not in great form so that's another thing and we've got our first choice right wing backs injured George Baldock will be starting that right wing back for today's game and the assistant managers nailed the first time. Jack Butland is going to start in goal. Bella Kochap, Jean, and Kerra in the centre of defender roles. George Baldock and uh, Luca Pellegrini as our right wing back and left wing back. Renato Sanchez in that box-to-box -box midfielder role with Danny Olmo as the Roman playmaker. He is getting a little bit more competent in that role and he is being trained. He's currently wanted by Paris Saint-Germain and Real Madrid. That's going to be a fun summer. Jean-Pierre in behind Erling Haaland and Sebastiano Esposito. So our squad naturally is incredibly young compared to Lazio's. Played in Serie A, it seems if you've got a 30-year-old, he's pretty young. So um, they've definitely got experience on their side. Thinking back to when we've played teams with a similar formation, I think we do okay against this. I don't think it's a favoured formation by any means, but um, I think we really struggle in the mirror sort of formations with the attack and wing backs. I think that's the sort of thing we struggle with. So we'll have to wait and see how today's game goes. Let's get the kick off. I am going to straight away actually change our wing backs to more of a supporting role. Um, just in response to their wingers and attack on wing backs, that might cause us problems down each side. First highlight of the game, two minutes in, it's Sebastiano Esposito who finds Pellegrini on this left hand side. Danny Olmo has drifted into the box. The cross comes in. Haaland, such an opportunity in the six yard box with a free header, and he cannot manage to get it on target. Another highlight now, Bella Kochap with a free kick in an advanced position in the Lazio half. It finds its way to Baldock on this right hand side. Ball's played in. Esposito gets his head in at this time and two good opportunities for us inside the first six minutes. Hopefully we can manage to put one of these away. We seem to be dominating possession in the first 15. If we can keep that up, that would be great. But Sabitza sets away Chiro Mobley. He's in behind 
Jack Butland, what a save that is, my son. Keeps us in the game inside 14 minutes. We obviously play a high line. We've got fast central defenders, but it does cause some issues when the ball comes over the top and they manage to remain onside. We can cause us some problems. Sabitzer with a go. Jack Butland again with a decent save. Two chances each for each side. It looks like Lazio are very much coming back into this. Mario Rui with another corner. It's played in this time. Butland claims, and that's the end of that. 25 minutes in now, there is another highlight. Haaland loses out to Kingsley Corman for Lazio. Thankfully, we can win the ball back before a counter can finally form and we play the ball over the top. Haaland's in one-on-one. -on -one. First time strike, good save by the keeper. Jean-Pierre with a free kick. He goes for goal. Oh, is that a keeper save? Haaland keeps it in. Jean-Pierre's there again. Oh, it's blocked by the defender. I thought that was going to be it. I thought Jean-Pierre was definitely going to get the goal there. Never mind, boys. A good free kick. Decent save by the keeper corner for us Danny Olmo to play it in the keeper only punches out and Jean-Pierre the keeper was on the floor if he gets that on target it's going in the back of the net so many good opportunities in this game in the first half none taken George Baldock now brings the ball down that right hand side he just gives the ball away a little bit poorly but Renato Sanchez can retain possession for us Danny Olmo on it now to Kerra Pellegrini Pellegrini nope he goes for Baldock that's fine by me as well he's got a bit of space to run into he gets the ball in it falls to Haaland who hits the post Ugh, I, don't, I don't think this game's meant to be Danny Olmo with a corner he plays it in it's clear by back New York or Bella Kotchap no that's it two shots on target from 13 isn't a great start, but we are dominating this match with 66% possession. And that is the end of the first half. No changes required from us. And um, we are definitely more than in this match. And if we were a little bit more clinical, we could find ourselves one or two goals to the good. It wasn't a B though in this first half. Let's see if we can do it in the second. Highlight now, Costa with a free kick for Lazio. Asabi with a head. I think he hits the top of the bar there and it goes just wide. 70 minutes gone now. We're going to make some changes. Esposito is going to come off for Alexander Isaac. He's one of the main men who could actually make a difference on our bench. And that is going to be all the changes we'll make so far. Luca Pellegrini is probably the next to come off. Ender Stevens is a decent little replacement. But the ball's played in Douglas Costa at the back post for Lazio. And they go 1 0 up with only 15 minutes to go. His seventh goal of the season. Lazari with the assist. Oh, that is devastating. We have. We don't deserve to find ourselves 1-0 down. The second half's been a bit dry, but um, Douglas Costa, decent finish, beats Jack Butland. 15 minutes to save our season. And we will make that change. Luca Pellegrini comes off for Ender Stevens. We'll get our wing-backs back attacking, see if they can create anything going forward. And that is it. We're going to, we've gone very attacking. We are going to go route one, just pump the ball forward. Um, let's see if it makes any blind bit of difference. Jean-Pierre with a free kick. Oh, he struck, that was too far out. Strakosha with a decent save to his far post. That was highly unlikely to go in. Ender Stevens with a corner. It's cleared. Nobody at the front post. Five minutes to go. Time is just ticking away. There's another highlight. Come on. Let this be the one where we get the goal. Danny Olmo finds Renato Sanchez in the centre, but he gives the ball away to back Yoko. And Lazio can now break with Douglas Costa on the left-hand side. He's already scored one to break our hearts. He goes to the byline and goes for the shot, which is typical. And there we go, full time, Lazio 1, Sheffield United 0, exposing some of our weaknesses there, um, lack of clinical finish, uh, not really creating the best opportunities we can when we get in attacking positions, and as you can see there, 22 shots compared to their 9, but only 4 on target for each side, is a little bit of a poor game, we did dominate possession, but it wasn't enough, um, we've done well to get to the final, and we had the chance of getting Champions League football, but to lose in the way we've just done is a little bit devastating. Um, and there's the confirmation. Lazio 1, Sheffield United 0. Douglas Costa come on in the second half and change things for Lazio. Getting in behind our defence a couple of times. And they were classed as the biggest overachievers after that game. Lazio winning that. Biggest underachievers by Munich. Must have got knocked out in the first knockout round against Chelsea. And there's our season in review. The Premier League table finishing 6th position on 67 points, 3 points ahead of what we managed to do last season. Runners up in the Europa League devastatingly, but we will be back in the competition next season, hoping to go one better. The FA Cup will manage to get to the 5th round, which was our board expectation, and get knocked out by Manchester United. And the League Cup, two, two cup finals this season, we've lost them both. We were runners up. I believe that one was against Manchester City, but far exceeding our board expectation in terms of the club vision we're on a b for manager performance that
that was A plus for quite a lot of the season, but um, because of our second half of season form, it has been going down. As you can see, from March onwards, we've had some pretty rough periods of um, form, so that has dropped our manager rating by quite a bit. But in terms of the actual objectives themselves, we've hit them all. Making the most of set pieces, I, I haven't done anything. So I, the fact that they're very pleased is very happy by me. Develop players using the club's youth system. There's no players in our first 11 who, who's been developed using the club's youth system. So I'm a little bit surprised they're satisfied with that, but quite happy with that. Playing possession football, they're satisfied with as well. Again, that's not one of the, my favourite um, types of player. But it has been something we've got better at, just purely because we've got better quality of players. Signing players for under age under 23, I'd do that anyway. Whether they had that as an objective or not, I always do that. Not signing players over the age of 30 is something I naturally favour as well. Player attacking football, again, I always do that. Entertainment football, what does that even mean? Apparently we do it, so I'm happy with that. High tempo pressing football is the style we've gone with as well. Working within the wage budget on course. You know, the wage budget did look a little bit dodgy at times, but we now have £220,000 available in the wage budget should we require it for next season. Signing players to sell for a profit. I don't envision any player I've signed not selling for a profit, to be honest. Um, we haven't signed anyone purely for the squad. They've always been with the eye of playing in the first team. The only one that might end up losing money on is maybe the likes of Alexander Isaac, purely because he's not getting the game time. But um, yeah, I think, I think they're right to be delighted by that one. And we've met all of our season objectives for the competitions. Europa League final, Premier League top half, FA Cup fifth round and League Cup fifth, fourth round. So, um, good season. It is a good season. We've already recorded a Premier League top half finish, which we weren't expected to do to the end of the 2023-24 season. So, two years time we had to actually manage to accomplish that it was as part of the five-year plan. So, we've got some good things coming at the end of this season as well. My contract's expiring, so they want to get the finger out. But um, end of next season, sorry. But our training facilities are getting improved, as are our youth facilities. And the board are hoping we maintain a Premier League top half finish. In terms of the players then, who's performed great? John pierre in behind the strikers, in the attack midfield role. He's pretty much finished his potential. It says three and a half star, four star there. But I can't envision him rocketing up in terms of his uh, raw attributes. But he's worth £40 million now at 24 years old. And he's had just a fantastic season. Particularly in the Europa League. 6 goals and 5 assists in 12 games. 11 goals and 3 assists in the Premier League in 37 games. 22 goals and 9 assists in 59 games in all competitions. Absolutely perfect. I don't think he's even been injured. He's just been an absolute revelation for us. As was Dodo. Unfortunately for us, he seems a little bit injury prone. I don't think it's on his report as injury prone. Um, but... I think there's been two or three times now where he's had pretty um, major injuries. So as you can see, broken ankle, and that was the se uh, February of this season. And in January, he had a virus, which was out for a couple of weeks. So that's only two, but it does feel like he's missed an awful lot of football. He has played well when he's managed to get the game time, though. Uh, 7.43 average rating in the Europa League with two assists and a goal in five games. Uh, four goals and three assists in 26 games in the Premier League with a 7.18. That is decent. And now it comes to our strikers. And again, I blame the formation and the tactic more than I blame anything else. But they don't really score a lot of goals. 12 goals in 31 games is nothing to sneeze at. But for a top half Premier League side, you really need someone rocking that 20 plus goal barrier. And Erling Haaland has the attributes to do it. I just need to find a way to be able to get the best out of him. He's rocking up in terms of his raw attributes. And he will continue to grow as a 21 year old. Valued at £32.5 million. Hopefully he will be at the club for a long time to come. And Esposito again, he has really blossomed in terms of his attributes. But 8 goals and 30 games in the Premier League is pretty awful. Honestly, he had a much better season last season, getting 15 goals in 38 games. So a little bit of a step back from him. But this is the first season he was up front with Erling Haaland. And rather than the likes of McBurney or Alexander Isaac. So maybe, maybe the partnership just doesn't work. Maybe it's something I'll have to look at in the summer. Bella Kochab was a new sign in this season and he has improved massively and done very well in the league for us. I think it was 9.25 million. The board were a little concerned at how much I'd spent on him. I don't know why. He is a wonder kid. Three and a half star current, five star potential. Still only 20 years old. So he's still got plenty of room to manoeuvre and he will be in the club for a long time. Danny Olmo, probably our star signing of the summer at 24.5 million pounds alongside uh, Erling Haaland. 
Five goals and 14 assists from centre midfield. He hasn't been playing an attacking midfielder, which is his natural position. Real Madrid and Paris Saint-Germain are sniffing though, and he has a minimum fee release clause of £88 million. So we might end up losing him um, during the summer. It just depends whether the AI think he's worth that much or not. Tilo Kerrer wants to leave the club. He's wanted by uh, by Munich. But he has been a rock out the back for us. Um, he's played 60 games this season. I don't think he's been injured. He was actually out for seven days in March this uh, last year, actually. So it wasn't this season. So he hasn't been injured at all. He's played in pretty much every game bar one in the Premier League. And he's been good. Um, but he is the sort of player that big money comes in. I don't mind. But he's only valued at 12.25. He's got a £66 million release fee. I want to bump it up. That's his asking price. But Bayern Munich came in in January and weren't even entertaining anything more than 20. So I find it highly unlikely he, he would leave the club. Alexander Isaac. He's probably the one who suffered the most because of Erling Haaland coming in. Five goals in 14 games in the Premier League with 10 substitute appearances. He's valued at £18 million. He's wanted by Brentford. It might be an idea to try and move him on and get a youngster in who's a little bit more happy playing second string. I would like to keep him though because he does give us that strength and depth in the striker position which we're lacking in a lot of other positions. Onjin, another good season by him, probably our best centre-back in terms of raw attributes. He, he's performed the worst actually in the Premier League, only averaging a 7 which is still fantastic for a centre-back. Three goals and one assist in that time. That's his second season at the club now and he has been a rock-solid centre-back for us which is fine by me. Luca Pellegrini, another injury-prone player. <clears throat> we really have to start looking at these. Uh, wing back roles they are our weakest according to our assistant manager anyway they are our weakest positions in the squad he's got three goals and four assists in 31 premier league games and to me his attributes look fine actually his physicals are a little bit a little bit weaker than i would like but he's well rounded apart from that and i think for the price we paid from 10 million pounds it was a decent sign and, and still is but he didn't perform as well as he did last season jack butland will be getting competition next season from another keeper but we'll save that for the next episode. Um, he only conceded 38 goals in 38 games in the Premier League, which had a goal a game on Football Manager for a keeper, especially for one that's not part of the top four or winning the league, is absolutely great, actually. We signed him only for £11.75 million last season, and I think if we were to sell him now, we would get far more than that. I know Spurs have been sniffing. Um, they were, I think they bid about £17 million in January, so we could get more money for him if we wanted Ronaldo Sanchez, of course, is another new sign-in coming in and playing the box-to-box -box midfielder role. It's a little bit of an unglamorous role for our side. A lot of the positions seem pretty specialised at one thing, whereas the box-to-box, -box, you just expect everything from them. A 6.93 average rating in the Premier League, I'm quite happy with. Um, three goals and four assists. Hopefully, we'll see some little improvements over the course of next season. £24.5 million. Pounds. Probably still overpaid a little bit, but he's worth 30 and a half now. He's still only 24. A little bit of room to grow. Uh, I'm happy with him. I really am. In terms of everybody else, they're pretty nondescript, really. A lot of our a lot of our squad players will end up leaving the club over the summer. The likes of Ben Osborne's been at the club since I've came, and he's just not very good. And he he's the sort of player we're relying on on the bench. The main ones I wouldn't mind keeping are the likes of Oliver Norwood and John Fleck. I think they are fine. Maybe look to replace John Fleck, actually, at 30 years old. Um, but they are some of our better options in terms of our bench options. Ender Stevens as well. He's a decent left wing back, but not absolutely great. So maybe if we get some interest in him. But the problem is the, these are all British players. And I don't really have any in my starting eleven aside from Jack Butland. So, um, yeah, that might be something we'll have to consider as well. But it's going to be a busy summer. We haven't had our transfer budget or anything yet. So we'll quickly get to that before we move on. And here is our end of season stuff that we go through every season. Our best overall 11 has pretty much changed. Jack Butland in goal. Jack O'Connor still there and sent him back. Bella Kotrap and Angina there. Pellegrini and George Baldock wingbacks. Renato Sanchez and Donny Olmo have came straight in and pinched that from Oliver Norwood and John Fleck. Jean-Pierre in behind Haaland and Esposito. End of season. Fans player of the season was Jean-Pierre. He was mine as well. He's been absolutely fantastic. We'll take a look at his goal. Signing of the season was Erling Haaland and young player of the season was Dodo, our right wing back, even though he missed quite a lot of games. Um, we'll take a look at this goal against Krasnodar and see what it was like. I can't really remember it. Oliver Norwood with the corners played in. It's cleared only as to John pierre who takes a strike from 25 yards and buries it. I've seen better goals from us this season. Anyway, end of season review. 
Uh, few will have tipped Sheffield United to achieve more than a top half finish heading into this season, but the Blades confounded expectations by securing continental football for next season. The Blades were one of the competition's surprise packages, consistently defying expectations and owing largely to impressive spell of form between September and October, so that saw them rise to third. We were able to celebrate a successful campaign. And I think it was a successful campaign. Crystal Palace was our match of the season, beating them 3-0 away from home. Moment to forget was our opening game of the season. Remember that, remember that episode when we got beat 6-0? Yeah, I didn't think we'd get the Europa League final after that either. In terms of the club vision and expectation meeting, is there anything they are adding or is it all the same? I think it's all the same, so I'm going to, still going to try and get that set pieces thing removed. But they never do anyway, so we'll just confirm it. So our club vision for next season is exactly the same as... Um, in terms of the club culture anyways, it's exactly the same as normal. But by the end of the 2023-24 season, they want us to become recognised as the best of the rest. How that's actually measured in Football Manager, whether it, maybe it's 6th, maybe it's 7th, I'm not really sure. But um, no doubt, I, I'm hoping that, that we're completely beyond that point uh, at the end of, not this season, next season. End of season teammate, and I'll do my own time. Jean-Pierre claims player of the season. The Europa League player of the season, Daniel Olmo coming in third as well, which is fantastic. And four of your players were selected in the Europa League camp, uh, Europa League squad of the season. Onjin, Belakotchap, Danny Olmo and Erling Haaland. Jean-Pierre didn't get in there. He was player of the season. Never mind. We'll move on. And there we have it. Our board set initial budgets. £1.6 million in the wages which is not a big increase, but £63 million in the transfer budget, considering we had zero, is absolutely massive. So we're going to be able to do some work in the summer. The board are going to upgrade the training and youth facilities. That'll be fantastic. And it granted an improved youth category rating. That is great as well. I look to get them to do some more stuff for me during the summer, but we'll leave that for the next episode so if you have enjoyed today's video please consider leaving a like and if you are enjoying my content get yourself subscribed but until next time take it easy